I put up thread the other day uh, illustrating my approach of designing and architecting software. And uh, you guys seem to like it. So this is the video illustrating that tweet uh, thread really in, in more details, right? How about we jump into it? So guys, the summary of uh, my approach when it comes to designing software or writing books for that matter, uh, which if you don't know guys, I wrote around four, five books in my career. And uh, the idea, it is not something new. I borrowed this idea from famous writers such as Seth Godin and others, where you sit down and just write in order to think. It's, it's the difference. You don't think to write, you just write in order to think. And it, boy, it really, really helps. When you just sit down and write your, whatever you're thinking about, thoughts will start to appear, right? And I use this approach to write my first book, my second, third, fourth, and the final book, all of them. And this is the same approach. This is, I'm going to go into details of how I actually go through that. And, 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 uh, and then I, I applied this approach to designing software. And as a result, it really became very uh, beneficial for me. And I think you guys are going to like it. Let's jump into the tweet and read it. I block two to three hours of uninterrupted time slots. It has to be two to three. If it's less than that, then you don't get a lot of work done. No meetings, no emails, or any other notifications. And then I use a note app that is a clutter free, right? Uh, for Windows, when I used to write on a Windows machine back in 2012, I used Write Monkey, and I absolutely love that tool, right? And for my Mac, when I switched to Mac, I used Focus Writer, I believe that's what it's called, right? And uh, what I do is I, I make it full dark mode, full screen dark mode, and this way it's only me and what I type. Well, you don't have to use this, but that's my approach, and I've been doing it for years and years, and it's really very, very beneficial for me. So the idea of clutter-free software might sound a little bit cheesy, but boy, it have worked for me. Because when you start writing, the only thing you see popping is just what you write. And this does something in your brain that makes you kind of want to write more. And when you do that, you don't really think about what you're writing. You just write, and then as you write, you start thinking. And somehow, what that does is like almost like persist your thoughts on desk on on on, on this, in this case that the paper is desk right it just persists them and when you persist them you can re-index them and thought think about them very very vividly and that's the trick here you don't really write the first this draft that whatever i'm gonna produce here is not something i uh, I'm gonna use as a final product. It's gonna be evolved as you can see. So let's continue reading it. I first start writing the workflow of how the software will be used in detailed length. I leave nothing out. There is a magical thing about st stating the obvious that helps the ideas and creativity freely roam. This step produces many questions to the project stakeholders because now you you when you start writing the software guys when you start building up the workflow of how that software will be used from start from the actual user experience up to the end how what is the use case what are we building what workflow this product that we're building is what will end up as a user story, which anyone essentially can read. It doesn't really have technical details, this first draft that I'm reading, writing, right? It just has a lot of uh, explaining the obvious stuff, that even the clicking of a button, right? Or the idea of having something on the back end that receives that request, right? You state the obvious, you state, you state how the user will interact with things, right? As much as possible, because that, the idea of writing these things, you will raise questions to your stakeholders, which are the owners of this thing, right? The, the one who has stake essentially in this thing. And uh, you're going you're gonna to start having questions. It's like, oh, what about this? Do you guys want this? You want this? Would you want, I don't know, an ordered list here? Or would you like, for example, a recommendation-based system? Or, and because all of this, anything that's written in this workflow is going to influence the backend. It's going to influence algorithms. It's going to influence so many other things. Let's continue. I compiled the questions raised from the workflow step 
and meet with the stakeholders to get a final say on the workflow. Part of the workflow would then turn into menship. The final workflow becomes available for non-technical people interested in this project. So let's talk about this. So once I finish this workflow draft, I there's a step that I didn't write here, but we're just, just going through that workflow and kind of compile a list of questions because that document is still not done. You have to compile these questions like what is everything? Really ask the stakeholder, okay, do you want this or do you want this? Or do you want, if you're building a chatting app, do you want read receipts or do you are you okay with just sending and forgetting about it, right? Or do you want end-to-end -end encryption or just uh, uh, centralized uh, TLS termination encryption layer that you can do? Like all these questions, right? All these questions are very, very important. You start compiling them. And then once you have, once you meet, I meet with the stakeholders, I get the answers to these questions and then go back and continue writing the workflow document to actually wrapping it up. And the idea of Minship here, which is the minimum viable product is very, very, very important. The workflow describes the entire software, the vision for it, how it will look like 10 years from now. You try as much as possible. Obviously that would change, right? But once you have that, you start extracting minimum viable product that you can ship as the first release. And then you extract that and that becomes a minimum viable product document, right? That's the idea here. Next step, I open a new page in WriteMonkey or Focus Writer and start writing down the design overview. So the second step is design overview. Now the actual design, now that you have laid down the actual requirement and you know the workflow and you know all this stuff, next step is the design. The design overview explains how users interact with the software and what really happens. It is a technical representation of the workflow. In this step, I can freely use technical terms. Now I can go into deep technical things. I can mention reverse proxies, I can mention uh, configuration management systems, I can mention all that stuff. Right, I'll mention uh, which databases I want to use because of this kind of workload. Uh, whether I want a column store or a row store, or whether I want an LSM based uh, indexing versus B3, I'll, I'll explain all this stuff. All right, this is going to be a lengthy technical that is unreadable for a for normal average Joe user only engineers are supposed to read this, right? So that's the idea of this. The design overview includes write-ups of different components of the system, right? We have to go through everything. How would the UX look like? The UI, the interfaces itself, uh, that include different websites, uh, mobile app if you have any, front-end, right? The actual front-end APIs, back-end, databases, it includes how the components interact with each, with each other, referencing the workflows whenever applicable. So the idea here is try to as much as possible reference the workflow because anything that you have in your design overview technical spec must reference the workflow. Otherwise, are you inventing stuff out of your head? No. The idea here is to ship something that, that was agreed upon. We, as engineers here, we should not let our emotions take the best of us, right? Because emotionally, you want to use all the latest, greatest technologies, right? But users is the first thing here, or the first thing. Again, guys, here, we don't have any diagrams yet. No diagrams whatsoever. None. Because diagrams would be the next step. Here is just the idea of writing things because as you write, you're going to start having more questions. And you can obviously meet with people here, this stuff, your, your teammates, if, if you have a, if you have like a, a, if you're part of a team, obviously you're going to meet with your teammates and discuss these design overview. There will be cycles going on back and forward. Some items in the overview design won't be linked back to the workflows such as, I don't know, asynchronous jobs or health checks that doesn't have a direct user input. And that's fine, right? Not everything will be linked to the workflow, right? Because some of these will be technical requirements. They won't be user-facing requirements. But most technical requirements are kind of born from user-facing requirements. Must be, right? Because otherwise, 
how did they become the, you add them for a reason and the reason eventually becomes the user right because you want to save extra one millisecond latency or, or whatever right which will affect the user. The design overview also helps me articulate things that I have never thought about. Here is where things st uh, started to, to form. What database would I need? What reverse proxy should I use? What would what would the backend scale? How would the backend scale? Would eager versus lazy approach be better? Again, no diagrams at all. The next step is to open a new page of right monkey for each component and write in details what the component is is about what does it interface with what does it compute what does it output i am allowed to go full technical mode here right so here the design overview is everything right from the front end up to the database up now you still have the responsibility of going through each box of this component and describe how it will look like right there will be an ordering system probably there will be a UI component. There will be a messaging system. They are gonna explain and describe how this technically works in its own document, right? And these documents will be joined at the end of the day, but that will, 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 will at the end of the day, once you finish all these components, each one at a, at a time, you will be building the whole spec, as we call it. The final step, after writing all those pieces is to draw the design overview diagram. It is a diagram of how all those components communicate with each other. I do not use a special software here, just blocks and squares and arrows with text. Simple, good uh, Google slide works perfectly. Here, here, you know, when you actually want to actually build a diagram, it's straightforward, right? Don't, don't, don't overthink the diagrams have to be like, oh, UML, I have the books of UMLs here. It just confuses you, man. Just, just do what makes sense. Like it's a boxes. I mean, everyone on the engineering community knows that all these diagrams are BS, right? I just do have a box and describe what this box means. I mean, I want as simple as possible. I don't want to memorize vocabulary and then okay, if it's like this, it's aggregation. If it's like this, it's composition. If it's like this, I don't know. If it's double dual communication, Ugh. all right. Maybe other people might be more successful than I am in this stuff, but I failed miserably when it comes to languages of diagrams. So I go with simple boxes, simple good old boxes, maybe a flowchart. There would be probably multiple diagrams for each component based on the complexity of the system. Plus, I would schedule reviews with the team every now and then. Hope that helped. All right. All right, guys. So that's that's it. Again, uh, it's not really straightforward to build this. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of discipline to sit down and do this stuff. The idea here, the major key is uh, writing in order to think. That's the goal of this whole thing, right? And it helped me build all my, write all my books. It helped me write all my blogs when I used to write a lot of blogs back in the day. But the idea here is, kind of fits nicely in the software because when you want to write like look at rfcs they don't use diagrams most of the time writing is very very critical here because you need to articulate every possible area and in order to do that you have to think about as much as possible about your software that you're designing best way that i think help is to actually sit down and write in order to think that worked for me it might work for you, it might not work for you, but I just wanted to share this video for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna see you in the next one. My name is Hussein, and I discuss all sorts of back-end stuff in this channel. If you like this stuff, hit that beautiful subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you get uh, notified every time, uh, every time YouTube sends a push notification all the way to Apple or Android Cloud, which then pushes down to your beautiful smartphone. Assuming there is a bi-directional communication that is already alive between you and the Apple and uh, the Android Cloud. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.